Hey, what's up guys? In this video, we're going to be talking about an insane uh, four-star team comp based around the new Cryo set, revolving around the Kea Changyun synergy and just dealing a ton, a ton of damage. I'm not kidding though, this team comp is insane. Definitely one of the best four-star comps uh, imaginable. It's just so strong and you deal a ton of damage, uh, especially with the new artifact set. Also, keep in mind throughout this video, every single one of my characters is under-leveled and or under-geared. Uh, if we look like all my characters that I use are not even close to being like max level, right? My highest is Kea at 70, but my supports are super low level, as you can see. And one of the beauties of this comp is actually that you don't need to invest very much into your, most of your characters. Your support characters can be low level. Obviously, the higher level, the more damage. But as long as you invest in your DPS, and um, considering that all these characters are four stars, as long as you have the characters, this comp is very free to play friendly uh, and just insane. It does so much damage. So I'm really excited to talk to you guys about this comp. I just want you guys to know I stream almost every night on Twitch. Follow me if you're interested. Link in the description. That being said, let's get right into it. All right, the first thing I want to talk to you guys about is why this comp is good. I'm going to try not to spend too much time here so this video isn't too long, but I'm also going to try not to talk too fast because I know a lot of people get annoyed. But uh, yeah, first of all, as I mentioned in my last video, this new set, Blizzard Strayer, is insane for Kea and just very good in general because it'll give you 15% cryo damage bonus and then 20% crit rate if your uh, opponent is afflicted by cryo and another 20 if they're frozen for a total of 40% crit rate and 15% cryo damage, which is nuts for an artifact set. Also, in terms of crit rate, you get another 15% if you're C1, and you get another 15% crit rate against uh, opponents that are frozen just by running two crowd characters, which you will be if you have Chongyun Kea, which is what we're talking about in this video. So that's a 15% plus 40% from the set, which is 55%. And then if you do have C1, that's another 15, making it a total of 70% crit rate with zero artifacts. Well, with the artifact set, of course, but with zero stats on your artifacts, even if all your artifacts are plus zero, that is still uh, like 70% crit rate, which is nuts. So what that means is that you can stack crit damage on Kea without having to worry about your crit rate since you're always going to be uh, at least pretty high, right? Having a bit over 70 can be nice, but you don't need to actively build crit rate. You can just get it on like one or two substats if you want. Now, apart from just the crit rate, why this comp works so well is that Chongyun will, his E will convert your damage to cryo, right? Will convert your Kea's auto attacks to cryo, which means you're just gonna be uh, constantly like freezing enemies and constantly dealing a ton of cryo damage. And it lets you build a cryo damage goblet to make all your damage uh, very powerful instead of having to split it between physical and cryo. Although physical KO is still good, but cryo KO is just nuts in this comp. On top of that, we run Sing Shou as a hydro support so that we can freeze enemies. And Bennett, obviously, probably the best four star in the game, uh, just so strong. He'll heal you, he'll give you more damage. He'll also be a pyro because oftentimes uh, you just need pyro in this game. So very, very nice support to run. And we're gonna be talking about how to build every character, how they work together and all that stuff in a little bit. Another reason why this comp works so well is that all these characters generate a ton of particles. Bennett's E is very spammable and fast. Sing Shou's E generates a ton of particles, especially with a uh, sacrificial sword. And Chong Yun um, just benefits from energy recharge. So basically, just by spamming all these abilities, you're constantly going to be like using your uh, elemental burst on every character. You're going to get so many particles, and you just get to spam all these ults that work very well together and that deal a ton of damage. But the main synergy and the main focus of this comp is Chong Yun Kea, Chong Yun's E, Cryo Field, transforming all of Kea's damage into Cryo damage and just destroying everything. Now, like every comp, this one has strengths and weaknesses. Um, it's good in most content, but like for Abyss 12, where everything's like there's a bunch of Cryo Slimes, it, it feels lackluster. But in almost every other aspect of the game, like Floor 11, 10, all that stuff in Abyss and just Overworld, it's so strong. I want to talk about how to play this comp. Now, I mentioned it briefly where you're going to be spamming abilities. Uh, the main thing you got to keep in mind is Sing Shou can basically have his ult active, like, or Rain Swords active at least pretty much all the time, especially with an energy recharge sword. Uh, just like use your E, get the Rain Swords, use your Q, high energy recharge, um, and basically that, that lets you freeze enemies with Chong Yun and Kea. So Chong Yun and Kea work well together because Chong Yun's E, which doesn't have too long of a cooldown, it's only five seconds after the field ends, and you can use that time to use uh, your support character's abilities, uh, does convert all of Kea's attacks into cryo, which is very, very nice, letting you constantly afflict enemies with cryo, constantly freeze them with Sing Cho, uh, and benefit from the, the set effect. So quite simply, you're gonna set up uh, Chong Yun's E, then you can do auto attacks in inside of it with Kea, and it'll just do a ton of cryo damage. Uh, and obviously, you want to be using your Bennett's ultimate pretty much on cooldown. You can use it at the start, uh, and you can use your Synchro as well to freeze enemies with the cryo damage you're going to be dealing inside of Chong Yun's field. Now, keep in mind, this comp revolves around Kea Chong Yun, which means the other supports are in theory interchangeable. You can maybe find better or worse options to replace them. But this is the four-star comp that works for me, and uh, it is focused around Kea Chong Yun. 
All right, now we're going to talk about builds. We're going to focus on our Kea DPS, and then we're going to talk about all our support characters. So for Kea, uh, I am just using my most leveled weapon, my highest base attack, very, very strong Aquila. But obviously, you don't need a five-star weapon to use them. Uh, trust me, this build is very free-to-play friendly. For a three-star option, you can consider running Harbinger of Dawn or Cool Steel to deal more damage against cryo targets. Uh, and for four-star swords, both of the blacksmith ones work. Uh, the Iron Sting gives you more elemental stuff. And even something like the Festering Desire for energy recharge and your elemental skill damage can work out pretty well. For your artifacts, you need the Blizzard Strayer set. Just grind this as fast as possible. This is why I'm making the video, because of how good this set is. And the main stat you want is crit damage. Now, my artifacts have a bit too much crit rate, but in general, crit damage is what you want. And it's basically what you need on your circlet. In fact, I'm even using a four-star crit damage circlet, despite having a very good five-star crit rate one because of how much better crit damage is here. Uh, and do note that my damage would be much higher if I had a crit damage five star. For your goblet, you need cryo damage. It's just a must, like run a four star cryo damage goblet if you don't have a good five star one, or just keep grinding till you get one. Because attack percent, um, if you are converting all your damage into cryo, it just doesn't really compare. Hourglass, obviously you want attack. Uh, and as I mentioned, look for crit damage on the substats and energy recharge and attack percent are nice too. Crit rate can be fine as well to try to hit like maybe 90% if you want. And then feather and flower is just substats. Something I do need to talk about for Kea though is his constellations. Now past two, they don't really matter. Like three is nice, but it's whatever. But one and two, if you can get them and Kea is available in the star glitter shop right now uh, for December are just really, really nice. So C1 gives you 15% crit rate, but C2 is amazing. Like it's actually so, so strong. It'll just increase your uh, Q duration, especially against multiple targets, making it last virtually forever. And it's just a ton of crowd damage. Very nice. Also keep in mind for my talents, they are pretty low level, especially my elemental burst, which does a ton of damage but i still just didn't want to uh I, well i can't farm the ballad books today since it is not wednesday so um yeah i'm just running it on pretty low talent levels uh, and keep in mind you guys can get this much much higher like if we compare this to my deluke 797 and my ko is 674 so like a lot of room for improvement here if i were to level my talents and yet despite that the damage i will be showcasing is very high i destroy everything so like it's basically just showing you guys that like the, the comp is insane, the damage is a ton, and if you invest more than I did, you'll just do even more than I uh, than I'm showing you. And actually, a lot of people complain like, oh, uh, this damage is unachievable because it's just whale YouTubers or because your constellation 26. Well, uh, I'm showing you low talents, a four star artifact on my Kea, and you'll see my supports aren't even that well built. And this comp is already doing insane amounts. So very, very achievable damage. All right, now we're going to talk about the other supports, Changyun, Singsho, and Bennett, and uh, briefly talk about their builds. I'll try not to make this too long. Uh, basically, Changyun, I'm running a two Blizzard Strayer, two Noblesse, and the reason I'm not running four Noblesse is because I have that on another support and it doesn't stack. So one of your supports needs four Noblesse, and the other two can have other builds, obviously, since they don't stack, as I mentioned. Um, so I run two Blizzard, two Noblesse, but honestly, like this would be much more efficient if I invested more into my Changyun. I'm keeping them low level, so I show you guys that this comp works at low investment, and because I'm completely broke right now, I don't have much uh, XP books or talent books or nothing. But uh, yeah, so if you are running two Noblesse, two Blizzard Strayer, which I recommend for a support Chong, uh, if you don't need four Noblesse, definitely try to level your talents up because it'll just uh, amplify your skill damage by a ton. Oh, and I feel like I should clarify this. You don't need to invest much in your supports for your Kea to shine and do a ton of damage, but to make the overall comp better and to make your Changyun do more damage with his uh, Q, same with like Xingxiao and other characters, um, that's when you do want to invest in your supports. Since I'm running them as a support, uh, I do want a energy recharge weapon, which is why I have Sacrificial Greatsword level one on them. Favonius Greatsword can work well too if you have it, um, if not, just run uh, the prototype Archaic if you need a uh, free-to-play weapon. And for like raw damage, you can run something like a Wolf if you have it, or a Skyward Pride, which should be the best claim on him because it's high damage and gives you energy recharge. So definitely run that if you have it. You're going to be building them like a burst support, which means a lot of uh, like damage. So attack percent on the hourglass, cryo damage on the goblet, and crit on the circlet. Uh, crit damage is probably better if you have enough crit rate, but uh, mine is just crit rate. And then uh, energy recharge as a subset is always appreciated on Changyun. For Sing Cho, uh, you're mainly using them to freeze and to deal hydro damage. So you're going to be running a ton of energy recharge. Sacrificial Sword obviously is ideal for them. And for artifacts, just the standard. Uh, I run attack percent on Sands. If you don't have enough energy recharge, you can use an ER Sands as well. But with an ER Sword, I feel like I have enough personally. Goblet, you want hydro damage bonus. And for Circlet, I just run crit. For your artifact set, two Heart of Depth, two Noblesse is ideal to deal a ton of damage with your burst. Uh, especially if you invest a lot into Sing Show. Uh, but usually I wouldn't recommend going higher than level 60 out of 70 um, because you that's when you get the uh, other talent. 
For Bennett, I'm running my four piece noblesse on him, and that's why I don't have four piece noblesse on other characters. Uh, and what I'm running is basically an energy recharge maximization build with also some HP and healing bonus to maximize my healing. Uh, but there are other possible builds if you want. I'm just focused on energy recharge and alt spamming. For your Bennett's weapon, you just want something with high energy recharge. A uh, Favonius sword is nice, Sack sword is okay, and Festering Desire too. For three star, obviously the energy recharge one is better, but on Bennett, uh, you do want something with a high base attack, so I would not recommend using a three star weapon, especially when a blacksmith weapon with a high base attack is available for everyone. But if you do have a five star sword, very nice because of the high base attack. All right, guys, so we're going to be clearing floor 10 with this comp so I can show you. It's one of the harder floors, and it is uh, a neutral one because it doesn't give you any buffs. Now, keep in mind, this team comp is exceptionally good on floor 11, which is a hard one, but it also increases your crowd damage. But in order to keep this showcase kind of neutral without you guys thinking I'm like abusing a buff or anything, I'm going to be doing it at floor 10 where you literally don't get any damage bonuses from the ley line. And then after, I'm just going to be including uh, a bunch of showcase clips everywhere, some domains, ley lines, everything. And I won't be using food, and it's going to be places where you don't get like buffs or anything.
As you guys saw during the DPS showcase, my KO is doing a ton of damage. Uh, the only small numbers were coming from like my Chongyun or Singsho, which will obviously be a lot higher if you invest into them. I am scared to upload this video because I know this comp is insane and super good, but I'm scared people uh, look at like my level 20 Chongyun and get upset. But yeah, guys, like this comp is insane. You guys saw my kid do a ton of damage and he's suboptimal right now, could have more talents, uh, could level my comp, all that stuff. So I really hope you guys enjoyed. This comp is actually insane. I really invite you guys to go try it out if you do want to use K as a DPS and if you do have these characters. Amazing four star team, very low budget, and doesn't require much investment. You'd ideally want at least level 60 out of 70 uh, for your supports, though, something that I I hope I can achieve soon. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Follow me on Twitch if you want. Join the Discord, it's popping. Uh, and that's about it, guys. Subscribe if you want to. If you don't, that's okay too. And I'll catch you guys in the next video.